three, two, one, happy this podcast. Before I continue my first ever journey through the Harry Potter series, just a few quick announcements. First, let me tell you how this episode is going down. The first portion will be the Potterless section of Multitude Live in Boston. Helen Zaltzman and I determine, with math, whether Percy Weasley is so good or the worst. Then, after the ad break, it's a section from Potter Castless Live at LeakyCon Dallas. Melissa and I did a whole bunch of fun stuff, but this clip is me playing Wizarding World Price is Right, where I quiz her about every single thing that costs money in the Wizarding World. We discuss it, and then we also do a really fun Q&A with the audience. So that's how this episode is breaking down. As far as announcements though, Wednesday, January 22nd, less than one month, I will be live in Phoenix, Arizona, doing Potterless Live at Valley Bar. It's going to be a really fun time. I've never been to Phoenix at all, so this is new and wonderful and exciting for me. I'm currently working with my guest as to what the format of the show will be, but if you enjoyed the Houston live show that I posted last week at all, you will love this live show. It'll be similar to that vibe. Very silly, very fun, interactive, and after the show, I'll be able to go to a bar, meet a bunch of you. I have no agenda in Phoenix that night, so it'll be a great time, and I'm very excited to travel there, perform there, and meet a bunch of you. So if you want to get tickets, you can go to bit.ly slash potterlessphx. Get them before they sell out, and I look forward to seeing your face in January. Also, for Christmas, as I do every year, I put up a bonus episode of Potterless for free at patreon.com slash Potterless. This Christmas, I posted another episode of Maturity Corner, which is where Johnny and I just play the Harry Potter movie, turn my phone on voice memo mode, and just talk over it. Riff tracks slash Mystery Science Theater 3000 style. We did this over the last two-ish hours of the eighth movie. It was interesting because it was late at night, and I was very confused by all of the changes that they made to the eighth movie, so you can check that out for free at patreon.com slash Potterless since Speaking of Patreon, we have new patrons. Welcome to the team. So shout out to Queer Icon Baby Grinch, Leanne Van Campen, Chloe Smith, Sarah Carswell, Lisa Rooch, Rike Mangor Jensen, Marta Guerrero Pastor, Kirsty Thompson, Julia Haney, Lauren Calhoun, Taylor Chesnett, and Jamie Zadunsky. Shout out to Artemis Peters, who upgraded their pledge. And a huge shout out to our new producer level patrons, Anthony and Reese Diggenen. They joined the ranks of Vicky Aaron, Jesse Clow Marchismo, Samantha Juan, Rose Marie, Marie Elisa, Romina, Audra, Eleanor, Rossanne, Nikita, Ali, Amelia, Sarah, Ben, Rachel, Zachary, Orchid, Vivian, Takari, Haley, Moster, Ingen, Alex, John. John Noel, Emily, Liz, Brandon, Sarah, Claire, Rory, Gloria, Veronica, Lada, Noah, Tracy, Colleen, Jennifer, Friday, Ivor, Naomi, Summer, Andrea, Lynn, Justin, Christine, Jacob, Toothless, Maya, Mark, Polly, Netta, Zena, Harlan, Noelia, Addy, Nikki, Kine, Amanda, Alicia, Kafir, Lindy, Sarah, Marta, Erin, Eileen, Violet, Lindsay, Keegan, Miranda, Gail, Ann, Mr. Folk, Maya, Kieran, Lily, Wire Warrior, Floor, Siri, Georgia, Peter, Skyla, Edel, Professor, Threat, Ellie, Daniel, Lee, Lily, Elizabeth, Michael, Tiffany, Kelly, Carrie, Connie, Mary, Jennifer, Jaden, Nedry, Will, Samantha, Kayla, Aurora, Emma, Out of Context, Marcos, Hannah, Courtney, Victoria, Marie, Ashton, Brittany, Phelan, Julie, The Meadows family, Ginny, Anna, Fake, Brianna, Jenny, Sarah, McKenna, Mary, Joy, Heather, Dead, Cat Lady, Javi, Darlene, Brad, Thomas, Charlotte, Brianna, Kevin, Lori, Chrissy, Bugaboo, Jarl, Haley, Emma, Ashley, Peta, Sophie, Jack, Jen, and Nicole, Callahan, Kylo, Leah, Melissa, Jordy, Bella, Melanie, Bill, Victoria, Joe, Elizabeth, Britt, Molly, Kayla, Steamed Nuggets, and Can't I Potter? Who never place a beer bottle too hard on a surface so much so that it foams and comes over the top of the bottle. If you want to be like one of these amazing patrons and get access to bonus content, stickers, shirts, exclusive live streams, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Potterless. But without further ado, let's get into this special live double feature episode of Potterless featuring Helen Zaltzman and Melissa Anelli. Okay, thank you. to this section of the Multitude Live show here in Boston, everybody. You may be wondering, oh my goodness, how did he survive that jump? But if you notice, I have new LeBron shoes <laughs> that are, though I would say violently purple, according to Nike.com, they are atomic violet. <laughs> so uh, we've had some fun here today, but we're now gonna have a little bit of a more serious discussion because there's something happening this weekend that's very important. You might think it's LeakyCon for me, but what it actually is is I'm gonna meet the guy who plays Percy Weasley. We gotta clear the air on that situation because Percy Weasley! Uh, there's a big question that needs to be asked and it's, is Percy Weasley so good or the worst? Because there's only two things that he could be. So good, the worst, the two genders. So. <laughs> What I have done to answer this question is I very legally downloaded all seven of the Harry Potter books. 
into PDF form and control F for Percy. And I have identified every single thing that Percy has done and analyzed whether these things are good or bad. Now, I can't just talk about it alone because that would be unfair because this would be a, a 45 second presentation where I'd be like, he's the worst, thanks so much for coming. <laughs> So what I will be doing is bringing on someone who professionally analyzes words and literature and all things of that nature. So please welcome to this change, my friend and previous guest on the show, Helen Zaltzman, everybody. <laughs> Hello. I just, I mean, thinking of words, I was just thinking of the word Percy, which firstly, I don't know if it's the same here, but in British English is a slightly old-fashioned euphemism for penis. Which, <laughs> Look, I think it fits. That may help your case. But secondly, I mean, usually in a family, right, the names are relatively consistent and they've got like fairly mainstream names, Bill, Charlie, Fred, George. Percy, what the fuck? Like, where did that come from? <laughs> so, go, Came out of left field and they're all good, 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 good. Percy, what the fuck? <laughs> Do you think they took him on as like a, some kind of exchange kid from? <laughs> <laughs> Treated him with a bad family <laughs> or a bad child. Yeah, they're like, we've got Weasleys to spare. Fine, we'll take. <laughs> <laughs> so here's how it's gonna work. So each action will be defined as either positive, negative, or neutral. I will just be talking about the highlights because unfortunately, Percy shows up a lot in the first couple of books. Um, <laughs> then there will be a total tallied for every book. Thankfully, there's seven books. So what we'll do is for each book, we will label him as in this book. He's either so good or the worst. There will be an uneven amount. We will come to a conclusion as to whether or not he's so good or the worst. What if he's neither, but he's like seven out of 10 the worst, so he's not even good enough to be the worst? <sighs> Let's find out what happens. <laughs> so we begin in book one. You know what the first thing Percy does in the entire series is? He changes into his robes and puts on his, quote, polished prefect badge, which says, look at me, I'm a special boy. <laughs> he does this before they even get onto the train. That's the first thing Percy does in the whole series. Ah, well, if you can't <laughs> wear it onto the train, What's the point? <laughs> he know, wants, he make, wants to show off to his family, I guess. There's a lot of fuss about getting the train. I assume this is a real wizard deal. <laughs> so you want a shiny badge. Yeah, let people know, look at me. I'm an important 15-year-old. Right. <laughs> So what one thing that he does is actually good is after Harry is sorted into Gryffindor, he vigorously shakes his hand in congratulations, which is nice. Yeah, not a weak handshake. No. That's one in his favor, I guess. Yes, does it well. Harry didn't want to get put into Slytherin. He gets Gryffindor, he's happy. But the next thing Percy does ruins all momentum here. He makes fun of Ron for getting into Gryffindor. Oh, so in fact, him congratulating Harry is like, well done on this shit thing. <laughs> yeah, he says to Ron, quote, well done, Ron, excellent. He says, as the narrator describes, pompously, a Cross Harry, so just speaks over Harry to make fun of Ron for doing the same thing he just congratulated someone for doing. Mm. Not a good look there, Purse. But Dumbledore then goes on to make a I'd like to ha say a few words joke where he just, he gets on stage and then he's like, I'd like to say a few words and then he just says six nonsense words. Great dad joke. God. Harry then asks, is this guy mad? And then Percy goes, no, 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 he's a powerful wizard. I hope he says something nice so I can defend my point because he looks pretty rough right now. You know what Percy is? He's the kind of guy that would get up at a Q and A and say, this isn't so much a question. Uh, <laughs> as it is a statement to prove that I know things. Yeah, 15 minutes later, mm -hmm. then. <laughs> Everyone else has left, so it's uh, fun. He's the kind of guy, like a podcast Q&A thing, to be like, I also run a podcast. It's called, like, no, don't do that. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> so Percy, just riding this wonderful momentum, they have this lavish feast at the Great Hall after they've been sorted. They're going to eat all this food. The first food that he takes up and offers Harry a bite of, he says, Harry, would you like some potatoes? He's never known wizarding food to exist. There's magical things. There's drinks that you can only get in the wizarding world. He goes, would you like potatoes? <laughs> Maybe, well, you know, wizards are kind of behind the times and things. Maybe they're like, we've got potatoes on our shores. <laughs> After they're brought here from South America. <laughs> yeah, a lot of their technology. <laughs> is several hundred years old, and so maybe are there root vegetables? We've only ever seen a turnip until now. <laughs> or maybe he's like, you've got to really amp up Harry's digestion to accept the wizard <laughs> The pumpkin stuff. juice and he, the fizzing whizbies. You know, he, he was eating muggle food until yesterday. 
It's got to get ready. Get that palette ready to go. Right. He then immediately starts talking to Hermione, both of them hoping that they actually have homework and lessons on the first day of school, not just that it's like a syllabus week. So he's that kid that like at the end of class, it's like, uh, professor, you forgot to give us our take-home quiz. <laughs> like that kind of guy. Do you think if the age gap had been slightly less, though, those two would have made a go of it? See, it's funny. It's early in the podcast. I was like, these two should be a thing. They're both horrible. <laughs> And then Hermione becomes great and Percy, we'll see how he turns out. He's, he's uh, uh, now like on the incel internet, isn't he? <laughs> oh. Well, speaking of him being grumpy, uh, <laughs> around Christmas time, when his entire family is opening presents, he pokes his head out of his bedroom and tells them to quiet down disapprovingly because they're making too much noise on Christmas morning. <laughs> You're having too much fun on the best day. Yeah, but what time? If it's six in the morning, he's... <laughs> All right, this he's, is why I brought you on. <laughs> he's, he's 15. That is a very sleepy time in his lives. <laughs> and a very angry time. So maybe he is the one true adolescent in this whole book. All right, that's one way to look at it. So let's, let, those are the highlights. Let's see the tallies of book one. Oh, there was another quote. I, I'm sorry. There was a great interaction between him and his twin brothers uh, where the narrator dunks on Percy. It's great. So he goes, I oh, can't stay long, mother. I'm up front. The prefects have got two compartments to themselves. So if then, the train crashes, we'll be first to die. <laughs> Fred and George say, oh, are you a prefect, Percy? Said one of the twins. You should have said something. We had no idea. And then, hang on. I think I remember him saying something about it. Said the other, once or twice, a minute, all summer. And then, oh, shut up, said Percy the prefect. The narrator getting in on the mix. I love it. Big fan of the narrator here. So the totals for book one, five positive things, five neutral things, nine negative things. So in Sorcerer slash Philosopher's Stone, depending on where you live, Percy is the worst. We now move on to book two. <laughs> Thank you. Don't worry, that was the most Percy-heavy book. I controlled F and it said like 58 results, and I was like, really? Oh, God. So book two uh, starts off great. First thing he does, he wears his prefect badge outside of a sweater vest. Just when you couldn't think a sweater vest could get any worse, he puts on a freshly polished prefect badge while they go shopping at not school. <laughs> Oh, oh my God, he's a kid that wears his school uniform. Mm -hmm. That's, oh. Yes. <laughs> Although, it's often stated that the Weasleys don't have a lot of money, so maybe that's his only clothes. <laughs> well, it's just the badge. He's not wearing the full the robe. It's is, just the badge. It's his only possession. <laughs> so he cherishes it. <laughs> I'm just speculating. So later on, early on, before they go to school, his whole family's playing Quidditch. He says that he can't play with them because he's too busy. I think this is great. Positive thing. Quidditch sucks. Yeah. Uh, moving on. Also, as I, I'm the only person in my family that doesn't care about sports at all, so I sympathize with him being the only non-jock. Mm -hmm. mm, right? I feel like there's other people in the I feel room. like I'm slowly turning into a Percy fan, which was not the, <laughs> not the point of this segment. I'm just looking for the source of the damage. <laughs> So, later on in this book, if you recall, Ginny Weasley, you know, gets possessed by the devil. <laughs> and she's not feeling well, and she's telling her brother about this. And he goes, oh, just take some pepper up potion. Which is like, I don't know if you had Ebola, and he's like, take some NyQuil, you'll be fine. You're just puking out of every orifice on your body. Just drink it, it's cool. This, this is just very much how things go in Britain. It's just like, <laughs> take some ibuprofen, and in 48 hours, it'll either have passed or you'll be dead. So either way, <laughs> no need to fuss now. Uh, so we can't quit. The prefect badger comes back into play. I don't know what he does to do this, but the narrator says that at one point when Percy is adjusting his prefect badge, the narrator says, quote, Percy was fingering his prefect badge. <laughs> I don't know if this, is this a British thing where like saying fingering is not always like... <laughs> What's that other thing that people always say, ejaculate? Uh, in the books, the, they say ejaculate. They also like grope, grope a lot, yeah, which think. people on Twitter have convinced me is not weird. No, they're lying to you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think, again, Percy is a teenager and uh, Percy, I don't know, what, like buffing his prefect badge, polishing his shiny, I don't know. Um, <laughs> it, could, it could be a thing. It could be, but fingering just, 
I don't know. I, I wasn't sure if that was supposed to be against the net rate or Percy, so I marked it as neutral. Um, <laughs> later on, Harry and Ron use a polyjuice potion to transform as Crab and Goyle. They are caught uh, sneaking about, and Ron, under disguise, claps back at Percy when he yells at him, saying, how come you can roam the halls at night? Because that's what Percy is yelling at him for. And Percy goes, I can because I'm a prefect, and I'm allowed to be here, and nothing is going to attack me, which is not how, like, trolls work. <laughs> Oh, you have an arbitrary position of power. I'm not gonna punch you. It's the badge. Yeah. <laughs> Shine it in his eye yeah. so he can't see. That's it, why he's always polishing it. All supernatural creatures can't stand the badge. <laughs> That's why it's a very valuable badge and you have to keep it shiny. <laughs> So the final thing that happens in this book is that Percy gets all flustered because he says that Ginny walked in on him doing something that he's very ashamed of. And it goes on throughout the whole books where like, they definitely set it up where like, Ginny saw him masturbating. That was like definitely like what the narrator is getting at. So this, not a good thing. You don't want to assume that. But it turns out the thing that he's ashamed of was for making out with his girlfriend in an empty classroom in the hallways. Hell yeah, Percy! <laughs> Where was cool Percy this whole time? <laughs> so ashamed of his normal impulses. Well, he's uh, doing a normal thing, breaking prefect rules. I love it. So this was a good thing, but that's the last thing that takes place. Who's Percy's girlfriend? Penelope Clearwater. Uh, Quite the name. Is she, is she good or bad or neutral? Uh, I think she breaks up with Percy, so I'm going to say good. <laughs> <laughs> So the totals of book two, he did 10 positive things. He did four neutral things and only nine negative. So that means book two, Percy was so good. Look at that. Can Percy keep up this momentum for book three? Spoiler alert, no. <laughs> First thing that happens in book three, he becomes head boy. That's good. That Aww. means you're a prefect and you're doing well, but I've heard head boy is like actually a normal thing in the UK. That's, is that like valedictorian or? It's like, uh, a knock. Oh. <laughs> it's like being put in charge of an organization unpaid mm. in a way that separates you from your peers and gives you a lot of extra work and you're supposed to be grateful for it. Okay. It's that kind of thing. Do you have yeah. prefects in America? No, we also don't. And this right. is something on the practice. Thing. I was like, ah, magic stuff. And then the entirety of the United Kingdom was like, come on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Treacle tarts are also real. <laughs> Yeah, instill hierarchies in children so they can perpetuate inequality. Mm, fun, 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 fun. So later on, one of the first things that happens in book three is Harry is not allowed to go to Hogsmeade, which is this cool thing where, you know, 14-year-olds can drink alcoholic beverages and no one cares. <laughs> and Percy tries to cheer Harry up by saying, don't worry, Harry, it's not that great. But then he describes all of the things in which Percy's like, oh, it's bad. They got this joke shop where they sell you like pranks and stuff. And then they have all this butterbeer everywhere and people get way too excited. Meanwhile, Harry's like crumbling in his chair because it's the coolest thing. So not great on Percy. Oh, uh, maybe it is a nightmare for Percy. <laughs> it's he, his worst nightmare. He has a lot of self-loathing, and so all of these, <laughs> all of these pleasures are really just uh, torment for him. <laughs> it's so deep. So later on, I mean, not too far off, there's a part where there's a, someone who's convicted of murdering 13 people caught in the school, so they have to have a sleepover party in the Great Hall. Dumbledore just conjures a bunch of sleeping bags because that's a spell. <laughs> and when everyone is like chatting and having a fun slumber party, he's the kid that tells everyone, quiet, go to bed, lights off, which, come on, Percy. Like I said, being head boy is a load <laughs> of shit. <laughs> So then here's something buck wild that Percy does at the end of book three. He bets his girlfriend, Penelope Clearwater, 10 galleons, which is like 60-ish dollars on- What, what, is that the official exchange rate? It's a whole thing I did I in an episode. The... I did this oh, whole sorry. thing that, in, that had inflation in the exchange rate, but like one, one time offhandedly, JK was like, oh, I thought a galleon was like five pounds. So, which is like different because like that was pre-Brexit when like the pound was worth something. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's a very sad. <laughs> Yeah, come at me, Boris Johnson Twitter. <laughs> so he bets... Uh, uh, well, actually... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Percy would love Boris Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, if he just went to the Muggle side, he would be in cabinet right now. Oh. We're living in a very Percy time. Oh, no, he'd be yeah. thriving. 
So he bets Penelope Clearwater 10 galleons on the match, and then immediately after whispers to Harry, go, hey, Harry, you got to win the match. I don't have 10 galleons. Many problems here. One, you've placed a bet against your girlfriend. That's fun. Do something normal, like I will massage your back or watch the show that you enjoy that I don't like. The wizards, they do not have any entertainment. <laughs> Except gambling. <laughs> Start them early. <laughs> Just a whole bunch of thing there. Then later on, Ron is freaking out because Sirius Black held a knife over his face. You know, the guy who's convicted of murdering 13 people. When he tells Percy this, Percy goes, you were probably just dreaming, Ron. Get over it. 13 murders! I know he was innocent in the end, but like, come on, knife to the face, it's your brother? You'd think he'd be a little more defensive. Well, again, we don't want to make a fuss, uh, you know. So either it's fine, you're unmurdered, or you're murdered. <laughs> there is no in between. Very true. Very, uh, very true. I suppose having your face sliced off, but you survive, would be the in between. <laughs> Percy is willing to take that risk. Yeah. So the a marginal <laughs> outcome. The final thing that happens. He's got spare brothers. So. <laughs> oh, I'm loving this so much. The final thing that happens in book three is that after the whole serious escape thing, Percy vows that if he works in the ministry, that he's going to have ideas for magical law enforcement, which I think is nice. But he goes on to say, if I manage to get into the ministry, I'll have a lot of proposals to make about magical law enforcement. And then the narrator comes back for round two, wants that second dunk. He told the only person who would listen, his girlfriend, Penelope, who breaks up with him in the next book, I think. I'm not confirmed. I think they do. I don't remember. But now we got to get to the totals. Six positive, four neutral, eight negative. Uh-oh, he's the worst in book three. Womp womp, book four, the sports one. <laughs> okay, Percy's Nightmare. Percy's Nightmare. Yeah, because this is the begin of the... This is jokes, the, jokes, jokes. <laughs> the start of the true downfall for Percy. First thing, yells at Harry for making too much noise in the house because he has an important report to do for the ministry. You know, about cauldron thickness. Do the ministry employ 17-year-olds? Yeah, that's, so you, 17 is like the last year you, you get a job. He's got like a, a, he's working on cauldron thickness. It's like not a, not a real job there. <laughs> Someone's got to. <laughs> otherwise, a lot of potions could get burnt if the cauldron's too thin, doesn't conduct properly. It's funny, that's exactly what Percy says when his brothers make fun of him. <laughs> you won't be laughing if a cauldron burns through. <laughs> oh. I think this is neutral. <laughs> or at least the cauldron should be neutral because you don't want a reactive metal. <laughs> science humor, science humor. <laughs> so something good that he does, he's the first person to name drop Ludo Bagman, who I now have an affinity for, but in the next sentence, he shits on him for being too charismatic. <laughs> Uh, he then later on they go to the World Cup and Harry learns uh, that the previous World Cup final lasted five days. Uh. And he, and, yep, really bad. <laughs> Harry goes, I wish that would happen. And Percy goes, I don't. This is a good thing. <laughs> Very you, good thing. You know, there is a real sport that lasts five days and that's cricket. cricket. Mm. Yeah. So it's just like a land-based Quidditch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Quidditch, it has so many good things, mainly it's just the flying and nothing else. What if we took out the flying? <laughs> oh, a fun they sport. for days, ha! Huh? <laughs> <laughs> they break for tea, <laughs> <laughs> Takes hours. <sighs> Percy thankfully doesn't have much going on the rest of him in book four. He doesn't go to King's Cross to wish his family goodbye because he has too much cauldron work to do. And, and also fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> then later on- I don't like him either, so. <laughs> Very on. I mean, this is why I think also he is not a Weasley. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's just somehow incorporated into our because he doesn't like them and they don't like him. No, two way street. And he's maybe the product of this like slightly terse upbringing. Could be. I'm not trying to sympathize. <laughs> just trying just to explain. Examine what's going on. Every jerk has to start somewhere. <laughs> So he's a bit pompous when he fills in for his boss, Barty Crouch. He goes on to say this quote where he says, I've been promoted, Percy said before Harry could ask, and then narrator back for a third dunk. And from his tone, he might have been announcing his election as supreme ruler of the universe. <laughs> to brag saying that he has become a personal assistant. That's his big flex. 
Yeah, on the other hand, he's a 17-year-old with a job, so... Mm. Hey, that is true. Now, before we finish up book four, there is something bonkers that happened that I didn't notice uh, because at the time I wasn't paying attention to all Ludo Bagman things. I just thought he was suspicious. Uh, Ludo Bagman and McGonagall dance with each other at the Yule Ball? Ooh. And no one told me? <laughs> what? Come on, guys. <laughs> like, where's the fan fiction about this? <laughs> But that's the end of book four. The total, seven positive, five neutral, 11 negative. So in book four, Percy the worst. Now, here's a real bad one. Oh, we will preview there. Book five. That's book just five. like not much positive about book five. Because this is the part where book five, Percy has his job at the ministry and then he like, you know, disowns his family. So not a good look. He does one good thing and it's one of the earliest things. They say Percy got new horn rim glasses. Style, nice. Good on you, Percy. <laughs> He then goes on, and I'm just gonna launch your list of all moments go. He gets into an argument with his father about his uh, ministry position, calls his father an idiot and a traitor. In his father's family photo on his desk, the photo version of Percy leaves. He nods sanctimoniously at Harry when he's on trial, ignores Harry and Arthur after the trial. He returns his Weasley sweater that his mother knitted for him by hand in the mail. He's anti-Dumbledore, he's pro-Umbridge. He makes a bad laugh that the narrator describes as being a fake laugh at a bad joke made by Cornelius Fudge, and he's giddy and hops up and down at the thought of Dumbledore getting removed because of his fake confession before Dumbledore does this and escapes the room. <laughs> and that's Percy in book five. Oh, he's a... Thank you. He's a real but her emails. <laughs> Oh, amazing. So, yeah. It was a warning. <laughs> One positive thing, zero neutral things, nine negative things, meaning in book five, Percy is the worst. <laughs> really bad. Really bad. Book six now, my favorite book. Here's why. Control F Percy, four mentions. Mm. <laughs> Book six, he comes home at Christmas, but only so that the corrupt uh, prime minister can talk to Harry. It's the only thing he does in book six. Zero positive, one neutral, one negative. You might be saying, this is kind of harsh to label him from the worst. He didn't do anything, but you know what? I'm gonna quote Jay-Z who said, men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie. <laughs> one is more than zero. He's the worst. Thanks gangsta finance for the quote. <laughs> So finally, we're gonna move on to book seven. And this, hey, Percy brings it around in book seven, which is nice, because he comes back and atones for his sins. So, starts off not great though, doesn't show up for Bill and Fleur's wedding, you know, his own brother, doesn't show up. Weddings are boring sometimes. <laughs> but Not yours, but. <laughs> mine's gonna be great. So, he then shows up in the room of requirement, apologizes for being a prat, apologizes to his father, explains his tricky work situation. He then, in a duel, makes a pun. He makes oh, a joke. Time in a place. <laughs> <laughs> makes a joke against his former boss, saying, like, I'm going to be resigning, minister. Uh, he won't leave his deceased brother Fred's body when he tragically gets murdered. He then goes on to chase after the person that murdered his brother, screams Rookwood when he does it, and this is all good, but then unfortunately we get to the epilogue, and the last thing, the final taste of the Percy palette is Harry as the narrator saying he was very glad that he couldn't clearly make out Percy, quote, speaking loudly about broomstick regulations at King's Cross. <laughs> last thing he does, so book seven, seven positive, one neutral, two negative, thus... Percy in book seven. So good. What's the pun that he does? The, it's, I guess it's not necessarily a pun. It's more of just like, he makes the joke of saying like, while he's fighting the guy that clearly he's defected from, he says, hey, minister, if you weren't aware, I'll be resigning. So not really a pun, but a good like, ha ha. Okay. Percy's first joke. Yeah, his, it's got to cut him some slack. His first career joke, not all going to be winners. But then what job do you think he got after that? Probably something in the ministry again. <laughs> but it's a better president now, so he can justify it. So we've had a lot of fun here. We gotta do the total tallies of so good. Two of the books, he's so good. Five, he's the worst. Might be a little hard here, don't worry. I have a degree in mechanical engineering that I'm definitely using, mom and dad. <laughs> Two is less than five, meaning we have determined with science that Percy Weasley is in fact the worst. <laughs> But like I said, he's only seven out of 10 the worst, so he's even kind of a failure at that. Yeah, he didn't, he wasn't full the worst. He's the worst at being the worst. He's the worst Weasley, for sure. Mm -hmm. 
But probably amongst the people that work at the ministry, they're just like, I don't like him that much, but he's not the worst one. Yeah, he's all right. Best place for him, maybe. Yeah, it could be. But that's all I've got. That was Percy. So good. The worst. Give it up for Helen Zaltzman, everybody. Look, I don't even have anything sassy to say. Helen Zaltzman is just an absolute gem. Hey, it's me, Editing Mike, just here, stepping in because you know what it is. It's time for a little bit of Wingardium Matarinosa. Today's episode of Potterless is brought to you by DoorDash. Let's say hypothetically that you are doing a live show for your live podcast and you really need to get food quickly because you're helping set up and you're doing a meet and greet beforehand and you can't really leave. You need food brought directly to you so that you can consume it and have energy because you're about to burn a lot of calories on the stage by talking and running around and being obnoxious. How are you going to get this food to your face quickly? You're going to use DoorDash. DoorDash hooks you up with your favorite restaurants in your city and ordering with DoorDash is so simple. Just open the DoorDash app, choose what you want to eat and your food will be delivered directly to you no matter where you you are. From tiny mom and pop pizza shops to big chains, DoorDash has it all. Recently, I used DoorDash to order a pizza when my parents were coming into town in New York, and it was fantastic because I was able to time the delivery with when they were going to arrive at my apartment from the airport, and it was fantastic. Didn't have to leave. We had food ready for them right as they arrived and had a wonderful lunch together. And you can have a great experience like this too because DoorDash has 340,000 restaurants in 3,300 cities in both the U.S. and Canada. So find something you want to eat with them. And if you want to save money while you do so, you are in luck because because as a Potter Hill listener, you can get $5 off your first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter the promo code Potterless. So again, you'll get $5 off your first order as long as it's $15 or more when you use the code Potterless at checkout in the DoorDash app. So download the DoorDash app, use the promo code Potterless, save $5 and get some delicious food in you before you take the stage today. Today's episode of Potterless is also brought to you by Wix. Let's say hypothetically that you are doing a live show in Phoenix, Arizona on January 22nd and you need to get the word out that you are performing this live show. How are you going to do it? How are you going to let the internet know that you will be live in Phoenix, Arizona? on January 22nd, you're going to use Wix to make a wonderful website. Making a website with Wix is super simple and incredibly customizable for whatever your skill set is or what you're looking for. I've hit the full spectrum of that. The Potteros website and the Horse website were both designed by Kelly. Kelly has a background in web design, so she was able to tinker around with all these tiny little details, and she absolutely loved it more so than other website providers because Wix allowed for more customization. Me, for my personal website, I used Wix, and I have no idea what I'm doing, so Wix's templates made it really Really easy for me to set it up. I didn't know what was going on with anything, but they made it super simple. They have lots of tips and tricks. Their FAQ is really helpful. They got a bunch of help articles for how to set all these things up. I was able to customize it to exactly what I was looking for, and I'm really happy with it. And it's easy to update your site. It's easy to make things look good on both desktop and mobile. I love using it, and even though I don't have experience with it, I have a very simple time maintaining the website. And with Wix, you have an unlimited free trial, so take as much time as you need to make your website perfect. And then when you want to upgrade to premium so that you can hook up a domain name to it and get some other extra features, you can save 10% as a Potterless listener if you go to PotterlessPodcast.com slash Wix and click the link. So you'll save 10% on that upgrade to premium. So go to PotterlessPodcast.com slash Wix, save 10%, and make a stunning website to announce your live show in Phoenix, Arizona on January 22nd today. Finally, today's episode of Potterless is brought to you by Calm. Let's say hypothetically that it is the new year and you're trying to be the new you. You want to set up new habits. You want to be happy. You want to be your healthiest self because it's 2020 and you need to see clear <laughs> with 2020 vision. How are you going to make sure you start 2020 in the right foot? You're going to use Calm to do so. No joke. Kelly has been reading a book about forming healthy habits. I can't think of a better time to do it than the new year. And I can't think of a better thing to use than Calm to improve your mental and physical health. Start that 2020 off right. Get good sleep whatever you need. I've used Calm. I love it. It's no surprise to me why it's the number one app for sleep, relaxation, and meditation. They've got sleep stories, which are basically like bedtime stories for adults. That really helps me, especially when I'm traveling and going to different time zones, which happens a lot. Helps me just fall asleep nice and smoothly. And what's really nice is they have a bunch of iconic voices. Two newer ones is LeVar Burton from Reading Rainbow and Nick Offerman from Parks and Rec. That's fantastic. If stories aren't your jam, don't worry. They have soothing music from Sam Smith. They also have guided meditations. If you're not necessarily looking for a sleep thing, maybe you just want to calm down in the middle of the day or before something stressful. Maybe you're about to go to a New Year's Eve party. You're worried about if you're going to kiss someone at midnight slash who you're going to kiss at midnight. Maybe you want to zen out before this happens. You can do a guided meditation, a breathing exercise, a lot of different things to help you relax and de-stress. And as a Potterless listener, you can get a limited time offer of 40% off a Calm Premium subscription if you go to calm.com slash Potterless. This gives you access to hundreds of hours of programming and over 60 million people have used Calm. So why don't you join them today? 
day and try to accomplish your goals ASAP. Again, com.com slash Potterless will get you a limited time promotion of 40% off com premium subscription. This is limited. This is more than it usually is. So jump on it now. 40% off unlimited access of the entire library at com.com slash Potterless. So go check it out. Save that money and start 2020 on the right Zen foot today. So at, at every other Harry Potter live show or Potter live show that I've ever done, I always have like a very loud, ridiculous intro that usually makes a lot of mess. I So I've done like a confetti cannon. I did streamers and stuff. I did a money gun at the Potter live show. And then I was like, I would really like LeakyCon to invite me back. So I'm not going to do anything that makes a mess. So last year, Talks in the Aura <laughs> decided they wouldn't tell us that they, she was getting us a, she was bringing a confetti blower, which is it was great. It was a great moment. There are musicians. It was, it's a little different. No, because it cost us $2,000 to clean. Real? Okay. <laughs> very glad I did not bring anything. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Conventions are very expensive. <laughs> so, uh, so I appreciate you not bringing a confetti cannon. Yes. I decided to make all the loudness of an intro in my outfit. Excellent. So speaking of money, okay. I've prepared us for a little game with the help of my Potterless Very Private Fancy Facebook group. They helped me. Shout out to everyone that, that's here. Some people are here in the flesh. What what is a private fancy face? How it's, does this so work? just like there's the Potterless like page that you can make on Facebook that's just like you can like whatever. But then I made a group and it's a private group in that like you have to request to join it so that yeah, people yeah. can't like spam it because sure, I sure. have like that. So when I was making it, it was like, what do you want to make the name? And I was like, well, clearly this is the fancy private Facebook Excellent. group. So and now it's called now the it's fancy the private. fancy private okay. Facebook group in all caps, of course. So with the help of them, I put together a list of things that we're going to be playing Wizard Price is Right. Because they have to buy some things in the wizarding world, and it's like very inconsistent for how much things cost. Some things are really expensive, some things are really cheap. So let me just say at the very beginning that what we're going to be doing is the conversion rate that J.K. Rowling said offhand once, which is that she envisioned a galleon to be five pounds. And given the current state of the pound to USD, which like, oh, Brexit, it's really taking a hit. Um, that's six dollars. So we're living in a world where galleons are six dollars, which thus that's means... That's insane, first of all, the exchange <laughs> rate. I just need to, <laughs> need to think about that for a minute. There was a time when that would have been ten dollars. Right. Wild. Mm -hmm. It was okay. close to that. So galleons are six dollars. And thus, a sickle is 35 cents, and thus, a nut or a canute, if you're the, the Jim, Jim Dale, Dale audiobook, books, yeah. mm -hmm. is one cent. So a that's canute all is of the one conversion cent. rate. Okay. So the first item that I so have. So I have to guess? You have to guess. Okay. And then we'll see if you're right or wrong. And then okay. we'll just like rant about how wild these prices are. Economic strife. I'm here for it. <laughs> <laughs> so the first one, which I think is a great place to start, is with Harry's wand. So he does have to pay for this, even though the wand chooses the wizard. It doesn't say whether or not like all wands cost this, but this is how much Harry pays. I would think it's very funny if the different wands cost different amounts. And Ollivander does it to like scheme people right. like, your wand costs a lot of money. It's like, what are you talking about? Like the one chooses the wizard. Well, so, <laughs> <laughs> and I choose the prices. <laughs> so, so I know this one uh -huh. because it has been reinforced in my okay, head by Harry good. and the Potters. It is seven galleons. It is seven galleons, which my is forty-two only dollars. Costs seven galleons. Yeah. They say it's a bargain. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's cheaper than what it costs at Universal. Well, but no, <laughs> yes, but there's a unicorn. If you add up all the constituent parts, like a unicorn here, right. is ten galleons. Oh, so it's like it's so a deal to get it in the wand. How is Ollivander doing this? He he has to be sourcing you know, his a, own it's stuff. It's a labor of love for all of Or it's sanctioned it's by the passion. ministry. Oh, it's like government funded. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I get it because everyone needs one. In the He's long arming the wizarding, the wizarding world. world. There's that. <laughs> so let's move on to the next one, which uh, the thing that I want to purchase the most is the Omni Oculars. Oh, the number 12 appeared in my head. Very close. 13? It's 10 gallons. 10 gallons. So those are 60 bucks, which like seems pretty good for like fancy goggles that allows you to like replay yeah. and slow mo and do a whole lot. Like that's, that's pretty seems... good. That's like a phone. Yeah. Replay <laughs> slow mo. Like that a, basically is like a really good phone. So here's one that I think this price is interesting. Do you know how much apparition lessons cost? <gasps> Wait, let me think. It's in school. It's in school. But they still have to pay for it, which does like hold true because of like you did have to pay for driver's ed even if you took it in school. Sure, which is and it's ridiculous. all one, all in one. Yeah, they at least it's this is what cost. the fee is. It's a flat fee. Twenty galleons. Twelve galleons. Oh. So seventy two dollars just to learn how to operate. Like you got to pay seventy two dollars, and then maybe you're Susan Bones and you like lose your leg, and you're like, ah, yeah. why did I pay money for Do, this? Does that include insurance? I hope insurance is part splinched. of it. Maybe that's why it costs so much. Getting splinched sounds. <laughs> Really, awful. really awful. awful. Yeah, yeah. Also, it depends how you get splinched and where you get splinched. Mm -hmm. 
Like, you know, you lose an eyebrow. Sure, it'll grow back. Sure. You'll be all right. Other pieces of you. Yeah. The yeah. harder to reattach, I and would like, imagine. I understand that it seems like everyone's okay after splinching, but like, what if you splinched your head off? Like, would you be okay? Would you just be like nearly headless Nick? What if you were in half? Right? How do they get all your insides back in? I just, uh, do yeah. magical beings have like a special enchantment that if you got cut in half, you your insides You thought clean up of out? a confetti cannon was expensive. That's exactly. <laughs> Wait till you got to clean up organs off the floor. What I'm saying. <laughs> $72 apparently. <laughs> okay, so now we move on to textbooks in the wizarding world. Advanced potion making. How much do you think this textbook costs? I'm so mad at myself that I never looked, looked, looked <laughs> closely. It's the kind of thing your eyes just glaze over. Um, four galleons. It is nine galleons. What? That's which, enormous. Which at first. That's more I, than a wand. Well, so that's the thing. When you compare it to the other things, it's weird. But then me, like when I was in college, my textbooks were like 85 stinking dollars, which was ridiculous. So, th so wait, compared to what I had to pay. This is yeah. potions? This is advanced potions making. Yeah. So it's more than your wand. Yes. <laughs> that's nuts. It's very strange. Ollivander must have given Harry a sweet discount. <laughs> Try to curry favor with the boy who lived, who he yeah, knew would he's be. like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's only $7, Harry. He's like, the brother of that wand looks like a bone, so <laughs> clearly this must be important. <laughs> okay, so we've had things that don't cost a lot of money. Let's go with something, the most expensive thing that I am aware of in the Harry Potter okay, universe, the fire bolt. Oh, yeah. Do we have a price on the fire? Isn't we it like do. inquire for a price? Um... I think there's a price. The Nimbus was an Inquire. I could swear it said Inquire, but okay, I'll guess. 300 galleons. You were closer with Nimbus because it's 2,000 galleons. What? The Firebolt costs $12,000. That's like okay, a but Honda think about Civic. It. <laughs> it's like a Honda Civic. Like, that's a nice car that does but, like okay. great on JD Power and Associates crash test station. How much does Serena Williams pay for a racket? Zero dollars because Wilson pays sure. her <laughs> to play with them. Sure. How much does Tiger Woods pay for his golf clubs? If golf he, if clubs he had to are pay? a lot. Like yeah. all of the clubs, it would probably I mean, be about. Yeah. So when you put it in perspective, so if it's like that level of professional sporting equipment. Mm. But like LeBron's shoes only cost like two hundred bucks. Because he's gonna bust through them in a week. That is true. He also, he also gets them for free, also gets and, them free. and they're also named free. after him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like he designed them. him. May might have cost him two hundred bucks, but uh, on if the street, you buy them online, yeah. if you want to oh, buy okay. your LeBron shoes, those are about like two hundred. What would be an equivalent for the fireball um they ride it so it's it's i, w I guess it's like your car in nascar <laughs> so it's not Two like thousand ga and so serious serious must have sensed that he didn't have a lot of time right because mm -hmm. just, just spit out or he had but the so much money are, it was insane yeah, right a lot but of did money he have that family. money i don't know because he was he ran away and all that i'm sure he found a way yeah i'm sure he definitely yeah yeah <laughs> no yeah so i guess i guess for him it's like nothing yeah 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 Okay, so now moving back to uh, the Quidditch World Cup, how much was Fred and George's bet with uh, my boy Ludo Bagman? <laughs> it is incredibly specific. Yeah, it's like it is, 73 or something. Ooh, you're really close. It's 72? <laughs> it is 37. Oh. So okay. close with 73. 37 galleons, yeah. 15 sickles, and three nuts for a total bet of $227.28. And a fake wand, which costs five galleons at the store. So they ended up, though, with Harry's thousand galleons. So they, they did well there. They did. Yeah, they made they a kill. They did well there. They did very well. Well, if Ludo ever... Did Ludo actually ever pay them, or did he no, like, run he away? No, he paid them in leprechaun gold. Oh, the, well, that, that yeah. dastardly deed. That, that Ludo <laughs> that Bagman. Villain. His name is Bagman. His name is Cashman. Mm -hmm. Let's, how did we not see... Like, the way Look, she, she does <laughs> the You don't have to ask me about how I didn't see it coming. Oh, fair enough. Because <laughs> <laughs> I fell so hard. Okay, so now we get into things. This one's fun because it's actually like reasonably priced. How much do you think a ticket for the night bus was? I know this. It's like 10 sickles or something. It's 11 sickles, yeah. I'm getting That's so That's really close. good. You're killing I'm, it. I'm in, I'm in shock here. Okay, so now there's, but there's some different tickets you can get on the night bus because uh -huh. you can get a ticket or you can get a ticket with hot chocolate. It's how like two much, extra sickles. It's two extra sickles for the hot how chocolate. How did I know that? And then how much is it to get hot chocolate and a hot water bottle and a toothbrush? Uh, it, well, they, they said they 15. did. Stop. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I can't. Secondary help above here. <laughs> the answer was given. Yes, yeah, so it it's 15. So here's one that is more interesting. Harry, when he buys all of the candy on the Hogwarts Express, he says, I'll take the lot, which I'm assuming is he buys everything that's available. How much does he pay for all of that candy? Seven sickles. It's 11 sickles and seven nuts. Oh, Still the close. seven number stuck in my head. Yeah, it's $3.87, which like, 
That's Either so candy cheap. is really cheap or there wasn't a lot of candy and Left. Harry's trying to look like a baller. There's like two chocolate frogs and he's like, yeah, I'll buy all of it. Like, <laughs> like if you, it's like if you go to a, like a coffee shop and like your coffee costs $1.95 and you like slide $2 and you like keep the change. $3 for <laughs> all of that. Yeah, $3.87 for literally every piece of candy. We're sitting economics are totally out of whack. Very strange, yeah, but yeah. I guess that's the price to pay when the trolley witch could murder you if you try to leave the train. Maybe, because she didn't, oh man, mm -hmm. the trolley witch don't. So how much is a butter beer? Oh my God, I know this. <laughs> I like the encouraging messages from the I front know, row. You've it's got so, this. this. That's Leaky Con in <laughs> yeah. a nutshell, right? Hufflepuffs all around. Um, 13 sickles. No, it's really cheap. It's like stupid cheap. It's like two sickles? Two sickles. It's two sickles? Two sickles. Yeah, come on, Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida. Eight dollars? Give me a break. That's like a, a galleon and a quarter. What is two <laughs> nice, sickles? Good math. <laughs> It's up there someplace. <laughs> so what what is two sickles uh translate 70 to? cents. 70 cents. For I can a see why beer. Winky like got drunk. Got drunk. It's like nothing. It's very cheap. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. super cheap. And also then she worked in the Hogwarts kitchens, which means, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Wait, did they not have butterbeer at Hogwarts kitchen. They always said that they. They always brought it in. Because well, yeah, then, how did Winky get them? Did she have to go to Hogsmeade? Every I think time? she might have had to. Well, also, also, she could. There's elf magic as the whole. Could maybe sure. teleporting was super easy for I them. I think they had it for like the feasts for like. Oh uh, yeah. Halloween and mm -hmm. whatnot, but okay. not like every not day. Not all around. Well, they are minorly alcoholic, so you don't want to be are. feeding alcohol to your even if it's minor <laughs> Still, to your eleven. Your eleven. What's your tolerance? <laughs> yeah, seriously. I guess they start early. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> okay, so we got two more. One. How much money? Did did Harry have in his vault in Gringotts? How do we know this? I don't know, but someone commented it on the Facebook group, so I trusted them. <laughs> <laughs> did you see the they look would on his face? They never lied to me. I trusted them. Ah. <laughs> uh, okay, so, okay, so this is just, there's no, there's literally no way it's never been said. You can buy said. a lot of fireballs. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's never been said, but it was full. It was, yes. So maybe that's like, they would have had to do a calculation yeah, of the maybe, size of the room. Or maybe it was like a Pottermore thing or something. Maybe. I, mm, I'm going to go with... <laughs> sorry, did I say a lot in my... Um, <laughs> I'm going to go with like $200,000. Okay. Pretty close. It's 50,625 galleons, which is $303,750. I still... This is suspicious math. Yeah. <laughs> it depends on the size of a galleon, yeah. the size of a room. The depreciation. Uh, tell your I fancy, <laughs> fancy Facebook group that I would like to see the receipts. <laughs> <laughs> this is, yeah, I could have gone super in-depth because I did what the current exchange rate. I could have done the exchange rate of the 90s and all this other stuff. Oh, yeah. No, so no, the, no. the last one that we have is how much is a scoop of flu powder? Five nuts. It's two sickles, so the same as a butter. Oh, beer. two sickles. So of seventy scoop. cents. Okay, same as butter yeah. beer. Two but there's something. Scoop. There's some other flu powder me like price that's in the uh, nut area. Spicy flu. It's powder. like a handful <laughs> or a scoop or something. Oh, uh, it might. Be, I think it might be a scoop. pinch. I think a pinch is a, a couple. A pinch or a yeah. scoop. Give it up for Melissa for getting like really close on a lot of those. That's very impressive. I've read the books a lot <laughs> over two decades. Yeah. <laughs> so they just they they yeah, the, I guess those numbers are in your head someplace. Mm -hmm. Well, we were gonna do a whole thing, but that might derail. Should we just move we on to questions? Move, yeah. Cool. Yeah, we were gonna do a conundrum, but that's gonna. I think we'd rather talk to you guys. About yeah. So if you have questions about either of our shows, yeah, yeah. WikiCon, yep. Anything a, we've talked about in any of our panels that we've been on together today? Or anything that's on your mind. Tell us how you're feeling. There's a mic over there, over there. Uh, so that we can get it into the recording, which will be on both of our feeds. Yes, I'll put it up at some point for Same. sure. Same. Hello, I'm Perrin. Hello. I was at your um, Room of Requirement talk. but <laughs> We I only talked about the Room of yes. Requirement. Only the Room of Requirement. <laughs> but I did show up a little late, so I'm sorry if you already answered this, All but good. I was just wondering, do you think that the Room of Requirement was destroyed by the Fiend Fire or only that specific room? This was like, a we did whole, talk about this. We talked about this a lot. Okay. Okay, I'm yeah. sorry. No, it's, no, you're, it's Basically, fine. Basically, okay. summarize the theory. We okay. agree that it's like Monsters, Inc., where there's a bunch of doors, and they line up, and then it opens. Right. And at least my thought is, like, just the room of hiding one died, but that's you still have, like, too. magical bathroom and storage closet yeah. and other stuff. Yeah, that's what I think, it's too. It's too much of a loss, I feel, yeah. for the magical world to not have that room. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you, guys. No, thank you. Hello. Your dress Your is dress. phenomenal. Okay, hold on. Hold on. We are about to talk about the dress. Okay. okay. First of all, it's made out of a first two first edition books. Okay. Whoa. I got from Half Price Books. They were six dollars. Somebody yeah, was yeah, throwing no, them away like anyway. It's not, not the like misprint a... ones that are worth like tens of thousands. It's not like sure. Sorcerer's Stone, the first fifty. Sure, they're not. No, we all have first edition I of Deathly Hallows no. books. Yeah. 
Money's just money. This dress is priceless. Yeah, the dress is priceless. So what I really wanted to say was, Mike, this is actually inspired by you because you have, I know you offhandedly made a comment about how you make notes in them and like Uh if you buy them, it's fine. They're arbitrary. Mm -hmm. Um, So I was like, you know what? I can destroy a book and that unlocked it. So this is all your fault. Oh, good. Thank you. I'm glad. No, so here's it. So I, so first I've, I've made lots of people mad (laughs) and I'm sorry, but the first thing I did was I like wrote in my book. I took notes and the first book book that I did that for when I was doing podcast prep was for the Half-Blood Prince, which like completely by accident, the one time I wrote in my book right. is the one where a main character is a textbook with writing in it. Right, right, but right. I posted that on Instagram and people are like, are you kidding me? You wrote in a book? And I was like, I bought it used. Who wouldn't write like, in a book? I, I don't know. Like, yeah. It's your book. Yeah, you when it's closed, no one can tell. So you I, like, can I make a it. dress out yeah, of it. Yeah, that's good. The other thing I did is I put them, my bookshelf has my books in order of color. So it's like a rainbow thing. So by that measure, the Harry Potter books are out of, are out of order. And people saw a picture of my book closet. And they were like, how do you have Order of the Phoenix before like the second book? What are you doing? <laughs> That's, that's I'm upsetting. glad that I you have did. convinced you that it's okay to destroy books because this is way cooler than a book. <laughs> <laughs> they are it all the really depressing cooler. parts though. And so I, all the like, because it's Half-Blood Prince and Deathly Hollows, mm-hmm. And so I have like Dumbledore's obituary on there. And I was mm. like reading it while I was, I was like, oh good. Okay. Put that there. That's awesome. Is it, is it an attempt to make something joyful out of something sad, or is it just how it happened? Sure. Sure. It yes. is now. Nice. It is now. Nice. It Very is good. Now. But I do have the first edition page right where people can see it, so I've been pointing to it all day smart. long. Smart. Very and then smart. Just thank you. But thank you. Yeah. Thanks. No, thanks so much. Oh, and you're amazing, and uh, thank you. Uh, I'm okay. <laughs> His hair, though. His hair, though. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm up, Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> hey, Mike. To bring in something that I've brought up in the all caps Potterless fancy Discord server, mm-hmm. eh? which you um, like moderate. You, Kevin he's moderates. The moderator, yeah. We talked about the sorting of Hagrid post book into mm-hmm. Gryffindor, and then the sorting of someone like Lockhart into Ravenclaw, mm-hmm. uh, and then we've also discussed a little bit about the post. Um, these last Fantastic Beast movies, the removal of the ages of most of the professors at Hogwarts so that right. they can use them and they aren't alive for seven years after these movies. <laughs> and so they remove the like year. Like from Pottermore, now it doesn't say the birthdays of people like Helga Hufflepuff. It just says like the medieval era. Did it used to? I think some of them used to and they removed it from the bios. Did because they take McGonagall's age out? McGonagall had a year. It was seven years after this last Fantastic Beast movie. Yeah. So they removed it because mm. she's a But teacher. that doesn't solve it. There's so much right? more so, so <laughs> to just solve. Destroying <laughs> evidence doesn't solve problems. <laughs> I guess I guess opinions about the post book sorting and the like weird choices like Hagrid. I see him as a Hufflepuff. Um, Gilderoy Lockhart. Not really sure that he's a Ravenclaw. I don't think um, he should have been a Hogwarts <laughs> student. <laughs> like, well, they shouldn't have let him in. <laughs> that's fair. I mean, he is. I think he's a Raven. You don't think he's a Ravenclaw? I, get, uh, I don't know. He's I know Ravenclaws get real annoyed that of the few Ravenclaws, it's he's like one of them. He, it feels like more Slytherin just in the fact that it was, what he did was smart, but it was also mean, so that could be like a cunning type thing. But yeah, I, I think like to go on the bigger thing of what you're saying of just like making things after and all of that, I feel like so much of the problem would be solved if they, it was just like communicated whether J.K. Rowling says something or tweets it or whatever. Because, like, I know everybody got mad about the McGonagall thing, but on paper, if people are upset, like, are you really mad that we're getting more <laughs> McGonagall? Like, no one should be complaining. This no, is the best I'm, thing that could happen. Totally. So I think, like, as long as JK's like, hey, I know that I made McGonagall younger, but I would like to put McGonagall in the movies. She's going to be a main character in the third one. Is that cool? Everyone would be like, yeah, it's the really thing, cool. <laughs> the thing I've said since day one is, like, there. I'm sure. I'm sure there is a reason. I'm sure there's something that she's going to explain, mm-hmm. whatever. But Right now, <laughs> even when you take the date out, her biography makes no sense. <laughs> Especially right, right, because right. she says in the book how long she's been teaching in Hogwarts. Yeah. Like it's a whole thing. Thirty something even, years. Yeah, and <laughs> we are. Oh my god, I've uh. been down this road fifty thousand times on podcast, <laughs> but I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's do it more. Um, but and if she wants to give us more McGonagall, like yeah, go for it. But you have to accept that some people are going to be confused right now. Right. That's oh, 100%. It's what all it a communication is. thing. Like any yeah. good relationship, you have to communicate. Yes. And like, JK, just talk to us. It's just okay. talk We're here. To us, Joe. Just We're like, right let here. us know. We're here. We'll you listen. my email address. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Come on. <laughs> Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jennifer. I'm a Gryffindor. Nice. If, yeah, yeah, for Gryffindors. <laughs> Question for y'all. If you were a Hogwarts student, 
which class would you be most interested in taking? I want to take arithmancy. Why? Because I used to be an engineer and it's <laughs> oh, wizard okay. well, physics. that makes sense. Like it's wizard <laughs> math physics sure. stuff, which would be really cool. Also, we never get to learn about it, so I'm very intrigued. We just know that Professor Vector teaches it because you can only teach what your last name says, Professor Sprout. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, that's all we know about arithmancy. So true. <laughs> I'd like charms. It's yeah. got some whimsy. It's the most, like, magical feeling right. of the class. And Flitwick teaches it, and he's, he's great. awesome. Flitwick's great. He was a dueling champion. Yeah, he's a badass. That, they need to bring that up more often. I agree, because when we did Family Feud, we, uh, they were like, name Ravenclaws. Flitwick wasn't on it. He was like, one of the answers? He was not one of the answers. Neither was Lockhart. Look, I don't know Michael what kind of what kinda half-baked convention are you running here, Melissa? We <laughs> asked the questions. <laughs> we asked the audience the questions, and that's what they answered. We asked, just publicly tweeted it or whatever, and 100 people answered. It was Marietta Edgecombe and Michael Corner were on it, but Flitwick Mariana and Lockhart. Mariana made it? Mariana. Oh, come on. Mariana the, Sneak The Edgecombe. snitch made it? Come the snitch on. Made it. Yeah. Ugh. So, um, or Marietta, so, yeah, I agree that we need some more about Flitwick. Yeah, and, yeah he's I'm awesome. Totally agree. Big fan. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm Jamie. I'm a Hufflepuff. Um, I don't know if you have answered nice. this on any of the like Patreon episodes oh. or anything. I haven't gotten through all of them yet. But oh, sorry. This is for Mike. Have you polled uh, like your listeners or your patrons or anything to know like how heavy any of the houses are? Do you know like how many of us are Oh, like houses? how they break out? Um, purely based on the shirt sales of the, I have Potter right. the shirts in like all the different house colors. And this either could be that there's the most Hufflepuffs or they're the nicest and pay <laughs> money my for shirts. my merchandise. <laughs> but like it was Hufflepuff, I think it's Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, Gryffindor, Slytherin. But I think the, uh, another thing that helps the Ravenclaw numbers is that I actually did it right, unlike Warner Brothers, and the shirts are bronze writing and oh, not silver. Right. And yes. I did. I have gotten a lot of emails where people Looks are like, like thank another... you. Yeah, there's nothing. Thank you. Like, I spent a lot of time. I, I crowdsourced to, like, all of Multitude. I asked them, like, is this the right bronze? Or you're should I wearing, pick a different bronze? You're wearing a Ravenclaw LeakyCon shirt? It is from LeakyCon, but it's not Raven. It's just Weasley as our it's king. It's just Weasley as our king. And is those it's colors. bronze, yeah, not I th silver. I think, yeah, I think. I think. I, I trust you. It's the. The color scheme can sometimes it depends on the item. Right. It can, that's why they did it in the I movies. get that it looks nice, but yeah. I want to be true to canon here. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> Last question. Last question. Call the listeners. I will. Yeah, I should. That'd be awesome. Yeah, do it. If you pull them, then you'll get one more for Ravenclaw. AJ <laughs> Ravenclaw. Right here. <laughs> All, right. All right. So I know this is quick. This is going back to the portraits and painting things nice. from the panel earlier. As a recap, there was a discussion about the um, subjectivity of the painter, the artist of mm -hmm. the portraits and stuff. And then blood was brought into it and all of that mm -hmm. stuff. So one thing I was thinking about is a way it's easy for us to disconnect ourselves with these analogies of, oh, painting and magic and this and that. But if we look in the real world, we've got if we assume the books are canon and the movies are renditions, <laughs> then we have a pretty common line that we're all familiar with, with a, <clears throat> did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? <laughs> and then, and that's how, we all know how that turned out. Yeah. Right. So that's just a good thing for us all to think about, about eh, their subjectivity in the, well, in the it. adaptation so, yeah. from, yeah. So I don't know if you have thoughts on that, but that's it. I mean, that line is the worst. <laughs> it's pretty egregious. It's literally well, the worst. Space like didn't read the books. Yeah, and and he's a great actor and a cool, seems like a cool guy and not a not a comment about any of that. Read the book. Yeah, like you're do your homework. Yeah, you're getting paid to be in this movie. It should They're be. They're not the hard to read. They're really not. Like I, it took me three years, but that's and because I was making a podcast. There were also about only it. four out of the time. Are, like when at he got least the, the first three are children's books. Like, I just don't understand. He's like, it should be in the script. But when you're an actor, and you ha and it's you have a script, and you have this gift of these thousands of pages of additional information, mm -hmm. and you're this great actor. You're the, one of these British knights, you know. Yeah. Why would you turn that away? Or yeah, or listen to the understand. audiobook or something. Yeah, I don't yeah. get why you wouldn't go like full fledged into it and decide yeah. he like mimicked it after his old headmaster at his school or something who was like really mean and yelling at stuff. Yeah, take a picture of the call of fire. We actually have a shirt in the Lincoln on, on, no, the, on just, the merch store. I saw it. Yeah, yeah it's Brilliant. my favorite shirt. He, he said, said calmly. calmly. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for your question. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> guys, thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us. And yes, happy LeakyCon. Give LeakyCon. a round of applause. You guys are awesome. LeakyCon will be in Boston in October. Mm -hmm. And I'll Orlando be there. You'll next be there. year. I will definitely be there. And Orlando next year. So we hope we see you at both of them and continue to see you online and part of all the groups. Hashtag everything LeakyCon so that we can, we can see it. Tag us and, and stuff. Tag us and stuff so we can retweet it. Right. And yeah. 
I would be remiss if while on crowd I didn't say the thing that I round up out of every episode of Potter. Let's so do thing, do as thing. they say in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter before they go way over for the time allotted on their stage, <gasps> Wizard on! Do they? <laughs> they don't. <laughs> They're like, yeah, because you asked me. I'm the best. <laughs> Melissa's reaction is the best because the first person that ever when I said like Wizard on, Melissa on microphone said, like, wait, they don't really say that, right? <laughs> <laughs> do, did I miss something? Did I forget that part? Guys, I know a lot about it. <laughs> Y'all have a very safe trip home, and thank you so much. Yeah, safe travels, everybody. Are you currently running a podcast? Are you thinking about starting one? Do you want some advice? Well, Multitude is here to help. We have consulting services. If you go to multitude.production slash consulting, or we have a bunch of resources from things that we have done, for whether it's panels or articles we've written, we just put them up for free. You can check those out at multitude.production slash resources. We are here to help you to make sure that you either start your podcast or run your podcast as best as you can. Potterless is created by Mick Schubert. It is hosted by Mick Schubert. It is edited by Mick Schubert. It is produced by Mick Schubert as well as Vicky Garcia, Aaron Johnson, Jesse Horgan, Klaus, Sir Lopu, Marchismo, Samantha Rose, Ponce on Filio, Rosemary Dodge, Marie Lisa C. Keen, Romina Rivadinier, Audra, Eleanor Curlin, Ross Ann Batamana, Nikita Power, Ali Madsen, Amelia Cross, Sarah Nink, Ben Silver, Rachel Guthrie, Zachary Polito, Orca Grower, Vivian the Owl, Takari Ron, Haley Hastings, Moster, Ingen Oddstotter, Alex Consilver, John Codker, Noel Basile, Emily Tyrell, Liz Bigelow, Brandon Pickin, Sarah Enson, Claire Spencer, Rory Collier, Gloria Gillen, Veronica Bartova, Lada Bartova, Noah, Tracy Toya, Colleen, Jennifer Mark, Lou, Friday J. Svensson, Ivor Peterson, Naomi Guglielmo, Summer Rathel, Andrea Crock, Lynn Walker, Justin Montero, Christine Saunders, Jacob Parrish, Toothless Walnut, Maya Gray, Mark Body, Polly Burge, Ned Atabani, Zina Rosnowski, Harlan Haskins, Noelia, Addie, Nikki Harris, Kine, Amanda Alfred, Alicia McLaren, Kafir Shaltiel, Lindy Placky, Sarah Shedder, Marta Morrison, Aaron Richter, Eileen Gazesh, Violet Sullivan, Lindsay Towning, Keegan Curran, Miranda Manning, Gail Ann, Mr. Folk, Maya, Kieran, Lily Leader Williams, Wire Warrior 4976, Floor Sake, Siri Scars, Ford, Georgia, Peter Wyckoff, Skyla Lily, Edel Ryan, Professor Threat, Ellie Husk of Chova, Daniel Fulkerson, Lee Lily, Elizabeth Christofferson, Michael David Yordi, Tiffany Cottrell, Kelly O'Till, Carrie Krempler, Connie Bienkowski, Mary Matil, Jennifer Went, Jaden Allman, Nedry OS, Will Huser, Samantha Lenz, Kayla M. Simino, Aurora Fruhoff, Emma Clark, Out of Context 69, Marco Cepeda, Hannah Zeters, Courtney Spilker, Victoria McCormick, Marie Rieger, Ashton Gabrielson, Brittany Gutierrez, Phelan, Julie Walton, The Meadows Family, Ginny from the Block, Anna Penalber, Alvarez, Fake Valentine, Brianna Jordan, Jenny, Sarah Saunders, McKenna Tweedy, Mary Joy Moi, Heather, Weekend of Dead Cat Ladies, Javi Guadalupe, Trejo the Third, Darlene Kerr, Brad Harding, Thomas Travera, Charlotte, Brianna Cusimano, Kevin Stewart, Lori McDonald, Chrissy Tu, Bugaboo, Jarl Sviven, Haley Logan, Emma, Ashley Enstrom, Peter McGrath, Sophie Duda, Jack McMahon, Jen and Rose Dab, Nicole Linzer, Callahan and Darius, Kylo the Husky, Leah Reed, Melissa Rob, Jordy Wright, Bella Barlack, Melanie Demi, Bill Gill, Victoria Colca Perry, Joe Radwan, Elizabeth Yu, Britt McLean, Molly Bautista, Kayla Spry, Anthony Reese Deganen, Steamed Nuggets, and Can't I Potter? Web designed by Kelly Beckman, and the music is by Bettina Campamanas. If you want to find us on social media, you can at facebook.com slash potterless, twitter.com slash potterless pod, instagram.com slash potterless podcast, and reddit.com slash r slash potterless. For all information about the show, you can go to potterlesspodcast.com. For bonus content, you can go to patreon.com slash potterless, and for merch, you can go to bit.ly slash merch on. If you want to see us live, in Phoenix, go to bit.ly slash Potterless PHX. If you want to tell someone about the show, whether it's online, via a review, or in person, that helps a ton. Thank you so much for listening, and until next time, as they say in the wizarding world of Harry Potter, wizard on!